Um, so in this um, in this video, I want to show y'all how to uh, find the eigenvalues and eigenvalues for this particular matrix. Okay. And so for this particular matrix, um, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors turn out to be complex valued, okay? Because there were, uh, there were a few questions on this, okay? So um, I wanna take the time to go through that. All right. Okay, so if we wanna find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, then remember uh, that we have to set up our system here. Okay? That is being, A minus lambda i. Okay, we want the determinant. So this is coming from this system, from this homogeneous system. Okay, so there's our coefficient matrix, and we're interested in um, always keep in mind that we're interested in the non-trivial solution of this form. Okay, so that means um, that we want the determinant of this matrix to be um, equal to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this. Okay, so we have two minus eight, eight, two minus lambda i. So this is two by two, so that means i has to be two by two. So this is going to, so lambda times i two will be this. So I think most of you are okay with this part. Um, and so then we end up getting two minus lambda minus eight, eight, and then uh, two minus lambda. All right, so there's there's the matrix that we have uh, for this particular system. Again, that is the um, the coefficient uh, matrix. Okay, so now we want the determinant of this to be uh, to be equal to zeros. Okay, for, uh, for so we want to find the, the eigenvalues that make the determinant equal to zero. Okay, all right, so let's do that here. Okay, so okay, so we have all right, so we want to take this and set it equal to zero. So this is two by two. So remember that for two by two, the determinant is just the product of the diagonal values minus the um, uh, the values on the off diagonal. So that's going to be two. So uh, this is going to give us our characters equation. So two minus lambda squared, and then we have minus and then negative 64. So that's going to give us plus 64 here. And then we have equals zero. Okay. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, uh, so you can actually solve this in a number of ways. Um, you can actually move the 64 over and then take square root of both sides. Uh, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the more general approach and just expand everything out, um, get a second degree polynomial, and then we could use the uh, quadratic formula to solve this. All right, so this is going to give us four minus four lambda plus lambda squared plus 64 equals to zero. As so we end up getting lambda squared minus four lambda plus 68. So just by looking at this, I can tell this is, um, you can see that the discriminant of this will be, will be um, negative, which means that this that implies that this will have imaginary values. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and solve it. Okay. Um, so remember, right, the quadratic formula is gonna be minus B, okay, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC divided by two A, where A, um, so A is the coefficient here, B is going to be minus four and C will be 68. So we can just plug those in. Minus B, so that's going to be four. So minus, it gets 16 minus four times A is one and then times 68 divided by two. Two times, well, two times one is just two. All right, so this is going to give us Um, so underneath, so we have our discriminant here. Okay, so that turns out to be uh, minus two fifty six. Okay, 
And so from there, um, 256 is a perfect square. So it turns out that 16 squared gives us 256. And we can rewrite this as, so this is gonna be 16 times I uh, because there's a minus there. So we can take the negative out. Um, and so the square root of, so the square root minus one is I. So that's where this I comes. And then from there, we can simplify this. So you divide two into each one of these. So you're gonna end up getting two plus or minus eight i. Okay. okay, so um, not surprising that you get, um, you get conjugate pairs here. Remember back in pre-calculus uh, that whenever you have a polynomial and if the coefficients are real valued here, okay, and if the discriminant is less than zero, then the um, then the the, um, the roots to those to that type of polynomial will always occur in conjugate pairs, um, which is what we have here. Okay. All right. So let's see. So our, those are your eigenvalues. Okay. Right. Those are your eigenvalues. So now let's go ahead and find the corresponding eigenvector. All right, so let's start with um, two plus eight i. And what I'll do is I'll work, go ahead and work here. Okay, so I'm going to, so I'm gonna keep this right here. So we definitely need to use this. Okay, so we're going to let lambda equal to two plus eight i. So plugging those, so plugging those back into here. Okay, so we have two minus this. So that means we have two minus two is zero, and then minus eight i. And then we have minus eight, and then eight, and then um, again two minus lambda, which is going to leave us with minus eight. So remember, this this is the um, this is the coefficient matrix for this system, right? Okay. So technically, what we have here, okay, we have x one, x two equals to the zero vector. So basically, right, we're solving for the null space, right? Remember, the null space is. Um, anything that gets mapped to the zero vector, anything in that set, in that collection, is the is the null space of this uh, of the matrix A in this case. All right, so <coughs> all right, so we have. Uh, I'll go ahead and write this way. So this is just augmenting the zero vector onto there. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just to just to illustrate the uh, the fact that we're we're solving a homogeneous system. All right, so because we're forcing um, the determinant to be equal to zero, we know that when you do an REF on that, um, in fact, these columns must be literally dependent. That means, and so the, we have to have at least one row of zeros. Well, in that case, the only option, the only possibility, um, will be this. So that's the benefit of knowing the, those, those theorems is that it saves you some time for, for the calculation. Okay. And so then from here, okay, we can further reduce this. Um, these are minus eight and minus eight, those are just constants. So we can divide through by minus eight and that will leave us with I one. And then we have the row of zeros here. Okay. And so again, this is just doing the REF. And, they, and just to be clear, um, we have to have a row, at least one row of zeros here, okay? But this two by two, so we end up getting this. Okay. All right, um, let's see. Okay, so now we go ahead and solve for the, uh, we can go and solve for the null space, okay? Or in this case, the eigenspace, right? 
So let's do that here. So I'm going to use, since I'm using X1 and X2, I'll just go ahead and use those. So X2, let's do that here. So we're going to let X2 be equal to some value. So here you can use any, you want to use any value, any letter, it's up to you. Okay. Um, uh, but we definitely know that's a free variable. So the T is going to be any real element. Okay. So by the way, this is just, I've been, you know, I've probably explained this before, but this just means that T is an element of the real numbers. Okay. All right. So X1 from there. So looking on the first line, our first row, X1 is going to be equal to minus X2, but we know that X1 is equal to minus T. And we have an, okay, so we have to be a little bit careful here. There's an I here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that. So let's go ahead and divide that now. So there's an I here. So I is acting as a coefficient. Okay, so let's, uh, so there's I here. So we need to divide by that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and write it here. So X1 is going to be equal to minus T over I. All right, so let's summarize this. Okay, so we can write our formal, we can write this formally. So the solution vector for X, so X, so that composes of X1 and X2. So this is going to be minus T over I. And then for X2, we have T. Okay, where T is a real number. Okay, then we can um, write this in parametric form. So what this says is that the, the eigenspace is, right, um, is in this form, okay? So the span of the, so the span, um, the solution span is going to be, or the solution set, I should say, is going to be a span of this vector, okay? So technically you could choose any value for T. You could choose any value for T that will give us our, um, um, that will give us an eigenvector that we can use here. So there's infinitely many, there's infinitely many choices, okay? Um, so the thing is you have to be really careful because as you know, the quizzes are multiple choice. So you have to kind of um, see what you get and then kind of play around with the T value, okay? So in this case, uh, this is actually one from the, uh, this is actually one of the quizzes, okay? Um, so so I'm there, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna show you how they got that solution. Okay, so, so technically this is right, but we need to play around this so that matches up with what they got. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, they got, all right. So something, so something um, useful here, okay, whenever you're working with complex numbers, if you recall, there's a property um, that one over I, if you remember from pre-calculus, one over I uh, is the same thing as minus I, right? And the way they, the way that is attained is you just take, and I'll do it over here. In fact, I'll write, I'll just rewrite this here. So negative I, okay? So the way they, the way they get this value is going to be one over I, and you can multiply the basically multiply the top and bottom by I. So that's just multiply by one. So you get one times I, which is I, and then I, remember that I squared is minus one. So you end up getting minus I, okay? So that's a really, um, this is a very useful thing to know, especially if you're going to like electrical engineering. Okay? That comes up quite a bit in circuit theory and other classes as well. Okay. Um, so we can we can utilize that property here because we have minus one over i. Well, minus one over i okay, is the same thing as since you have one over i, which is minus i, so that's negative negative, so that's gonna give us i here and then one. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so 
on the quiz, they actually end up getting the, the answer, okay? Um, they get one and negative pi. So let me show you how they got that, okay? It's the same thing, it's in the set. It's just, you have to, you have to be able to work with, the, with um, imaginary numbers. Okay, so uh, we can further rewrite this because remember they got one, right? They got one here and then the other value was minus pi. So what they did here is just divide by um, divide by pi. So remember, I is just a um, you can think of I as just a as a, as a number, right? It's an imaginary number. Um, and so we're free to do that because remember, this is just a this is a free variable. So if I multiply, right, I can multiply anything by I can multiply both of these by or sorry, divide these by I. Okay. So we're free to do that because with this free variable. And then so we get one over I. And so we divide both of these by, okay, by i. And so now, so one over i, remember one over i is negative i. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, i, sorry. Yeah, one over i is negative i and i over i is one. So we end up getting one and negative i, which is what they, uh, what this, what uh, they have as the solution. So all these are equivalent forms because they're all spanning, right? They all in the same span as this, right? Okay, so all this is, is just a vector. Um, it's a multiple of this vector, so, okay. All right, so that's just how they, that's how they got that, okay. So that is, um, so that's the eigenvector for, um, for this value, again, these are all these are all eigenvectors, okay? Just you just pick a value for t, okay? In this case, we get I should have a t here. So a lot of times, what they do, um, and some of the, some you know, for some of you have already mentioned this, but a lot of times they let t be equals to one, okay? And so that's right. So if you let t be equals to one, then you get your you get the eigen eigenvector here, okay? All right. Okay, so there's our there's an eigenvector for our eigenvalue two plus eight i. So let's write that here. So we have one and minus i. Okay, now we need to find the Corresponding eigenvector for two minus i. So it's kind of the same process here. Okay, it's all this. Okay, so this will change, obviously, because it's for a different eigenvalue. So again, putting this back into there, okay? So we get two minus lambda. So this is gonna give us, uh, so two minus two zero, and then we get negative of this. So that's eight i minus eight, eight, and then we get um, eight i again. Okay, so there's our homogeneous system, right? Uh, we wanna find the eigenspace. Just basically just just the fancy name for the for the null space of this matrix. All right, so let's see. We have eight i minus eight. All right, so let's see. Make sure that's here. All right, so we're going to get, let's see. Yeah, so we have to um, end up getting 8i minus 8. And then 0, 0 here. 
So again, what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and augment. I'll put the zeros on there. Even though you don't really have to, kind of understood just in case. I know some of you uh, prefer to have that based on what I've seen from the exams. So this, okay, we know that we have to have a row of zeros there. All right, and then furthermore, you can divide through by eight. So that's gonna leave us with I minus one, and then we have a row of zeros there. Now, okay, just let me mention something here. If you have a three by three, then, we could either have one row of zeros, right? Or two rows of zeros. So in that case, you can't really, um, you can't really jump to that conclusion. Um, you can't really jump to the matrix like I did here. Um, you would have to actually go through the row operations and you can do the same thing here, but it's gonna be, you have to, um, you know, it's a little, you have to use a little bit more algebra. So for example, you would have to use, um, you would have to do like, um, let's see have to say, uh, to make this zero, you would have to say one, let's see, uh, one, you would need one over eight I and then times minus eight. So then when you multiply these two, the A over I cancel out and then you get zero here. And you would take this and multiply with this and add it to that. And it works out. It actually, you go through some of the algebra, it actually works out. Um, so that's, I don't think you'll see anything for, um, I don't think you'll, You'll see anything for, uh, or at least for the complex case for um, three by three, okay? Uh, because if you understand this for two by two, then that's enough, okay? All right, um, let's see. All right, so let's, yep, so we're gonna solve for the uh, null space here or the eigenspace, okay? So we're going to have, we're going to let x2, E equals to t again, where t is some real element, and then x1, okay, so we have an i here, so x1 is going to be 1 over i, okay, so that's coming from this line, okay, so move the 1 over and then divide by i, so again, think of i as a coefficient, okay, so now the vector for x we have is 1 over i for x1, and then here. And then we have, um, let's see, we need a t here as well. Okay. So because it's an x2, so this is going to be uh, t over i. So that's t over i, and then x2, we have t. So you can go ahead and factor out t, write it in parametric form. So we get 1 over i and then 1. All right. So what the uh, solution had was. Uh, they have one i. So what they did there is just multiply uh, multiply both of these by i. So that's going to be one, and then you get i here. Okay, so multiply each of these by i. Okay, and so then to get the eigenvector, you're going to get you're going to let t be equal to Again, technically, for any value of t, you get your eigenvector. So there's lots of different answers. So if this was an exam, I mean, um, you know, there's going to be lots of different variations or lots of various answers, right? Um, so they're all acceptable. As long as this part is correct, then you can choose any, any t value, technically, okay? All right. Um, so um, there's our eigenvector, okay, for 2 minus 8 i. And one thing you should notice here, and I'm not sure if they mentioned this in, this in the textbook, they may, they may, but one thing you should notice is that um, if you look at these, right, if you notice the, the second value in each of these, they're complex conjugates, of, right? Okay, again, complex conjugates. And when I say complex conjugate, it means that if you have A plus IB, 
the complex conjugate of that, okay? So I'm abbreviate a CG is just A minus IB. Or you can have it, you know, A minus IB, the complex conjugate of that is um, A plus IB. So it's just change, it's just the difference in the signs. Okay. So that's what's right. So that's one of the properties of these is that the um, if you have complex eigenvalues, then the comp then the complex or the corresponding eigenvectors will be uh, will be conjugates of each other. Okay. All right, so, and the ones here will be the same because if you take the conjugate of a real number, it's just itself by definition. Uh, to get a real number, you would just let B be zero, okay? So, so every real number turns out to be a, um, so it turns out to be a complex number, okay? Just let B be zero, so. Um, so the real values will remain the same and then these will be um, different signs, okay? All right, so if this was, for example, if this was one plus I, that means the other one has to be one minus I, okay? So that's a that's even a quicker way um, to get the other to get the other eigenvectors. So you know, you don't necessarily have to go through all this. You just have to do it from one of them, and then from there, just realize, just take the complex um, conjugate. All right. Okay. Um, so those there's the solution. Okay. All right. Um, so we have their eigenvalues, right? And there's the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay. So I'm going to stop here.